Okay. All right, so I'm gonna preface this video by saying this is a bulletproof Batman suit. It really is bulletproof. And this is the first version that I've done. I would like to make different types of plates from different sorts of uh, comics. I don't know what to do with my hands. <clears throat> comics or Star Wars, um, things like that. So this is Mark One. aside from my other crappy builds that you've seen over there. Um, I'll preface this also, also preface this by saying that this is all from scratch. I spent a lot of time and money to make these um, so that I can make it in all sorts of different shapes, that it's light, it's thin, it's comfortable to wear, and it's bulletproof and performs really well. This does all of those things. I'm very happy with it. So, um, real quick, the way that I got this to fit me perfectly is I used 3D printing. I love 3D printing. Um, I made this as a perfect match for my body, and that's what I built the plates off of. And now, if you want to know how I did that, I do have a video that I made like a year ago on how to make cosplay parts that fit you perfectly in a 3D model. Because once you have that 3D model of yourself, you can just make whatever you want and make it look as cool as you want virtually, and then just print it out in your 3D printer, and boom, you've got yourself a uh, something to build off of, or make a mold, or whatever you want to do with that. So, recommend checking that video out if you want to see how that was done. I think that's all I wanted to go over. We've got a few things laid out here, some samples that I've built. This, for example, is one of the first models that we got of this style, and it took a lot of rounds already. It's been shot up a fair bit, but it looks super rough. And we've got some finicky models like this that really aren't very tough, but they look cool. And then, of course, the one that we tested. So I've got the plate here, one, two, three, four, five bullets, and the flak shield. Again, the reason the reason why I made the other plate, the demo plate, was just a solid, solid solidly wrapped was really because it was much easier to make, and it didn't have to look super cool. Um, the reason why this I, I wrap the flax shield separately is because I can attach my strap to the flax shield and just have it velcroed in. And then I can have this top tab here, which is velcro, I can pull it over over here and then I can attach it to my velcro here. And that pulls everything really tight to the plate so that it looks really nice. Um, so as we can see here, we can we've got the we've got the bullet pattern. And we can see the damage here. There's been one hit, two, three. It's hard to see, but there was a hit here, and then four, five. Again, you can tell that with, with hollow point critical defense, it's a little easier than full metal jacket to penetrate. And so it got completely stopped in my flak shield, which is really thin, um, thin, flexible, and light. And then I got my plates here. And the plates, oops, freak. The plates are really light. Like, I mean, I can move these. They're really light, so they don't weigh much. Um, and it stopped those really well. And if you go to the back here, we can see that there's that there's some chipping that happened. So again, hit, hit, uh, and then there's a hit, another hit here. So it's doom, 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 and then some hits in here, but it's really hard to see. Again, there's absolutely no back face deformation whatsoever from these impacts. Even the surface doesn't even have any damage really. So it took it like a champ, did really well on the flak shield. And now of course you guys are gonna be curious how thick are these actually? Okay, so uh, I'm gonna go ahead and show this. It's about 11.4, 11.5 millimeters. Um, I'm gonna roll this down so you can see that it's properly calibrated here. Um, so it's pretty thin, uh, and that's including both the shock plate here and the uh, flak shield, of course. We have those two parts. Okay, so I pulled this plate out of here, and again, we have a lot of area here that wasn't hit at all, so we basically, we had all of those rounds going in this one channel, and so all that force is right in here, which is why we did get a few penetrations because we weren't really hitting all this extra real estate. Now you can see some pretty awesome hits here. This is from 357 mags here, and that 357 round got just completely decimated. Absolutely crazy what it did, and some of these, some of these, uh, nine millimeter full metal jackets got completely flattened. Just totally flattened. And this one was one that I pulled out of the bottom of this. Um, and then we've got some of these, like this one wasn't really, oops. This one just balled up on the surface. And then we've got some of these that are really stuck in here and I just, they're not going anywhere. But again, even after all of this, the plate is still rock solid. It's not going anywhere. So, and then when I flip it over, it's really not bad. I, like, like all of this in here is, it's plenty solid and it's strong and like I can't, you know, it's it's a solid plate. It's the only thing is that we got this penetration here and we got penetration here as well and right here. We got a little, it was a weaker bullet. It was stopped in the place, not as much penetration. But still, again, all of that firepower here 
30 rounds of 9mm, 6 rounds of, was all put in this section. That's why it failed early. If it was through here, we could have taken even more, but still, it did a great job. Here's a brief movement demo. You can see that without me having a back plate, it stays on pretty well. It does bounce around a little bit with the side swing, but not bad. I 3D printed the symbol out of soft filament. The reason I did this is because I wanted it to have a smooth, raised finish, just like it does in the comics, but paint would definitely be something that'd be more durable. Um, at least until I find a better way to attach this other than just super gluing it to the fabric. And then as far as the sewing goes, I just got all my fabric from the local fabric store. It doesn't have to be anything special. Um, when, I, when I did sew and make my flax shield, um, I used a piece of cardboard as like a, a rough template because that was made out of a soft material, whereas the shock plate was made using some 3D printing techniques that I had. Um, and then the, the last part was just sewing it to fit that flax shield that I had cut out to the same size of as the cardboard. Now I am keeping it intentionally vague on how I made the flax shield and the shock plate. That's just because I don't really feel comfortable reviewing how I made that on YouTube. Um, if you're one of those people like me that's super curious and really wants to know, I do apologize. Um, yeah. I showed earlier that I had a few different plates that I had built recently, but I have built a ton of plates the past two years that I've been doing this and tested them against a full range of different calibers, and some are better than others. This particular plate I mostly built against small arms, but here's an example of what happens when a 12 gauge slug defeats a plate. Ooh, shoot! We're <laughs> <laughs> through! Man, I yeah. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> And thank you for watching ahead of time, thank you. Um, as far as the testing goes, as you can see in the punching video, it stayed on well. However, when I do a side swing, that is when it jostled a lot. It went sideways, and that is just because the plate is about three pounds, three to four pounds, but I don't have a back plate, which typically you have a back plate. And what that does is allows you to sink the two plates together, and you get a lot less movement. Right now, I've got this plate just sitting on the front with just empty straps and no weight behind it. So for the fact that it has no counterweight, it actually does really well and it can show you that it doesn't weigh very much. Um, another thing, I have gotten some comments and things about sending this to another YouTuber to test. The reason why I'm not going to do that is because I'm a small YouTuber, um, I don't make any money off of YouTube, which is perfectly fine. I'm just putting this out here so people can learn. I would absolutely love it if people could just get ideas from what I make and do their own versions. So, being as these plates cost me around two to three hundred dollars, along with all of the work to make it, I'm not going to be shipping them to another YouTuber for free content for their channel because they're not going to actually... If I watch their videos, for example, and I see something, I'm not going to actually click to see who sent them that item they're testing. I'm just going to go to the next video that's queued up for this particular YouTuber. So, I'm a small channel and I have a small amount of content, and so I'm going to keep this content proprietary to my channel. So I hope that makes sense. Um, I do have all of the guns and things like that that I can use to do my own testing with these plates for my channel. Um, so I'm going to be keeping it here in Crash Makerspace. Yeah, and I got some comments like that on my, on my TikTok as well. I have a TikTok where I do the same YouTube videos that I do here, but I just condense them into a really consumable one minute long video. Um, and that is all I wanted to talk about. So that's the plate. Thank you guys for watching. I really appreciate it. And I like, I feel like I should have a, um, like a closing statement, like, go make stuff. Go make stuff. <laughs> All right.